wanted to bring Panda in and thought mm -hmm. that Lolo's synergy was a bit better because, again, there's no restrictions with these players. A lot of them are... Uh, NA players here on the Echo Fox Academy side. So whatever the decision is, Echo Fox at one on five, clearly trying some things with their roster. Yeah, and I mean the same thing was true for Hundred Thieves, right? Swapping things around. Sometimes you know what is is not working. You just need to change things up. You just need to see if you can change the attitude in the team, or if you can change you know, the momentum kind of that that you have. Uh, at that given time. It certainly has worked out for 100 Thieves. We'll see if it can work here today for Echo Fox. Fans, though, almost complete here for Phase 1. Rumble, Sejuani, and one more to go there for Echo Fox. And Karma and Yumi continue to pick up fans mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, Rumble, a little bit of a flavor ban there towards Huni, who has been so good on the pick. It has been his most played free plays on that one on another three of the champions. So. Another LeBlanc band, so certainly rising in priority. It does feel like on 9-12 with Silas falling off, with Rise kind of falling off the table as well. You know, another champion has moved up to take that priority, and, and thus far it seems like it is LeBlanc. And debating the last band Azir, here, wow. Scrag says Aziz, who's received a lot of bands today. There's not very many in Phase 1. Yeah, I think especially when you're going up against Phoenix, he's known for his That's Azir. Uh, when it is in meta, you don't want to let this guy play it. It has been his signature champion for so many years. You know, even way back on the Team Liquid days, he's certainly making some plays that a lot of people will remember. Lorlo going to be getting his hands on that first pick, Aatrox. We'll see what Huni has here in store for us as the answer. Well, no such one to play in with the Aatrox. That was actually part of the uh, Lolo and Pandas Academy win yesterday, so they are actually playing through the weekend. They'll also potentially be playing on Sunday tomorrow, as they are one of the teams in the showcase. However, Clutch going to take Aurelia here. Great champion for both their solo laners. Again, we talk about how much of this team in their strong early game is attributed to both Tuni and Demonte's individual mm -hmm. prowess. So, picking the good chance for their lanes, always a good start. Yeah, it will be interesting to see where it goes. Neither of them have actually played Aurelia thus far this split, so first pick here for Clutch. Uh, they're going to be grabbing themselves a Lux. Uh, likely will be support for Vulcan, but Demonte did play it once already. Uh, did have quite a good game on it last week in a win, I do believe. So, you know, certainly something they have to watch out for and, and kind of give that respect to. This could be Demonte's pick already, or he could be still saving that for later in the draft. Nautilus, as well as the Olaf and the Aatrox, this is a run at you team. Uh, if I was Clutch, I would be taking or banning away Sivir. I don't think you want to give away that pairing. I think Sivir is so incredibly good with that style of composition for the speed up. Uh, we'll see where Clutch is going to go. They could just go for Lux, Sivir, bot lane themselves, which we just saw CLG using. Uh, also could be going for something a little bit more safe if they wanted a more defensive AD, but I really do like this, especially taking into consideration the style that Cody Sun plays, which mm -hmm. generally is farm it out in lane, look for the late game team fights. That's where he generally shines. And it's a denial pick, you know, kind of from the opposing team and, and also from their composition. Yep, speed up your teammates that all want to dive, which is all of them except him. And then team fight <laughs> nice and safely as you kind of farm up softly but slowly there for Cody. So I like the pick as well. That does maybe mean that Lyra will be pushed down for a few junglers, but we'll find out in a moment as Callista actually going to get banned away. Certainly something that has traditionally been pretty good into Siva. So yeah. I need to get that one off the table. And also, if you're looking for full in aggression, if you're looking for engage, uh, Kalista is certainly someone who can do that. You know, utilizing the ultimate throw in the Nautilus, uh, going to give you even more engage, and also someone who can really follow up very well on that Nautilus engage. If they were wanting to target more aggressive ADs, you could look for something like the Draven or the Lucian. Uh, those are two who certainly can pick up the pace and, and really try to play aggressively. They will take Lucian off the table. I think that makes a lot of sense given you know, their kind of line of reasoning here with the Callista ban. And Echo Fox, one more ban, likely to try to just knock down Lyra. They want to be banning out things that are good matchups into Olaf, trying to set up Panda for success here against Lyra. And, Will be Trundle taken off the table. Remember, you can you can pop your ultimate, but the pillar can still block you out of a fight. So that is one of the things that they really kind of want to avoid. Uh, Olaf also can struggle and, and kind of put himself into to a bad resist situation when Trundle ults you and then you pop your ult, which gives you negative resist. So that can allow the Olaf to be focused down very easily. I wouldn't be surprised to just see something along the lines of a J4. Yeah, uh, that seems like a, a pretty reasonable pick, and we'll be getting locked in here for Lyra. So. Everything pretty much, I think, according to plan thus far. We just need to find out what the rest of the picks are going to be here for Echo Fox. I do feel like you want to play aggressively. You want to be going in. 
You, you could use something if you want more speed ups along the lines of, of an Oriana. Ooh, I forgot about oh, this. Okay. It was left up. I actually completely missed it. It was not banned so far, but not going to be picked. Yeah. I guess teams just deciding that they knew we weren't going to play it. So there's Zaya okay, potentially so joining the Nautilus or maybe joining Rakan. Yeah, very unlikely. I mean, Nautilus hasn't been played uh, mid lanes for a very long time. Really. Yeah. You know, it was, was kind of getting some popularity there, but not even on MSI main stage. So AP Nico. Uh, this is team fight. This is like, you know, really feels like all it wants to do is, is kind of run at you and, and try to try to get advantages there. You could play a little bit more side lane theoretically, um, but very likely going to be AP Nico. They have a lot of forms of engage. If you can get up on top of them, lock them down with the Nautilus. You have the Feather Root for follow up. You have the Root as well from Nico for follow up. So certainly a lot of power Ooh. there. Going to be the TF though from DeMonte. So instead of just kind of going at their opponents and trying to match power with power, this feels like more you're trying to one three one you're trying to spread the map, deny Echo Fox from ever having that 5v5 by simply making them answer waves and having the Lux, the Jarvan, and the Sivir for constant wave clear in that mid lane seems very powerful. And if you want to try to make sure that Aurelia, you know, can get an advantage against Aatrox, well, now you have Jarvan, a strong early ganking jungler, as well as Demonte, who post six can jump up to that lane and really try to get things started. Yeah, very curious to see kind of a different look here for Clutch. I think still power in the hands of the right player. Demonte has been one of the better performing members of Clutch, arguably the best performing, actually, given the games they've played so far. But this is not, you know, something like an Akali, some sort of really heavy flashy playmaking champion to a is very impressive, but mm -hmm. you're much more about controlling the map and the pace of the game rather than just diving in and trying to kill a carry. Yeah, yeah, certainly the case. You know, maybe super late game. If you get very strong, you can try to pull off that sort of a play with, with Lichmane and, and so on. Uh, there is also the possibility that we do get, you know, the style of build that Bjergsen brought out, which was kind of the AD on hit, the, the Triforce rapid fire for the additional range on that gold card. You can go that sort of style if you want to hard commit to the side lane. It is going to be Klepto. Uh, and I have been seeing people often do Klepto with that sort of style. Yes. Does not preclude it from being AP. Uh, but I do have a feeling that we might be getting that ADTF. I mean, Demonte is the kind of player that has you know, always been on the cutting edge of things in Soul He plays a lot. He was one of the first adopters of Zoe mm -hmm. down in Academy when he played for Echo Fox Academy, actually. So certainly a player that is always on top of the new metagame stuff. So not surprised to see him pull out Twisted Fate in this sort of situation. In fact, Clutch was the team that lost to it. <laughs> when Bjergsen played it. So I guess they're like, you know what? I like that idea. As uh, Fake Panda and Hakuo and Lolo are all going to move out onto the rift. See if Echo Fox can try and find a bit of momentum. A la 100 Thieves. And maybe a level 1 in Bay. Get him at least get Huni's flash out of the deal. Yeah, and that is really good. Being able to put Huni in kind of this difficult situation already. Now, this is multiple games today where we have seen this heavy commit to the top side invade. Uh, simply walking up there. We saw how well Viper actually, you know, handled that with just an early ward in his tri brush and then just backing off, playing it very defensively. Uh, there is a cost, of course, to that that sort of a level one ward, as you, you won't have it for later, but in pro, it's pretty standard to drop your ward level one regardless. So that may start being the, the kind of more normal response if this becomes uh, a pretty standard thing. Also worth noting that Lorla was actually going Grasp, so this is not common for kind of the Q-Poke, this is not Conqueror for more of the Brawling. This is about, you know, short, punchy trades where you are, you know, just getting the grasp ready on minions, then going for a quick trade, then backing off, and then just constantly doing this and trying to actually wear down Huni, utilizing Deathbringer stance as well as grasp. Yeah, we'll see if how, how the extended potential trades play out, but Lolo feeling pretty comfy on the pick, having played it very recently. Phoenix also uh, certainly a champion that can make some very splashy plays, mm -hmm. but uh, one that we haven't seen him pilot yet, I believe. Yeah, yeah, first for him, this split. Uh, AP Nico certainly getting popular and people really like him to play Shell Augment. Spooky goes Super Soaker. You have a lot of control and it does allow you to set up for those roots very easily. Uh, can be certainly quite powerful when you are looking towards that sort of a stage as Pony wanting to trade aggressively here regardless. Nice root though. Yep, actually on the Hakuo gets a good amount of damage, kind of showing off the power of range supports versus something like Nautilus, but Lux especially feels so punishing when you miss that. Yeah, and, and notice this is Aftershock. This is not the Comet style because he's playing against Nautilus. And Bowfrost actually you know, mentioned that, that matchup specifically 
uh, as being one where you're probably going to run it down if you don't yep, have aftershock. you feed if you don't have aftershock. But the, the kind of way that this interaction works is because it's it's so telegraphed, when Nautilus is hooking towards you, it's an unmissable binding. You just need to have the reaction timing to actually throw it out quickly enough because he is locked into that straightforward animation. Uh, and you will be able to hit that binding. Yes, even if you get hooked, you're going to have aftershock then. You can throw out your W for the shielding. It becomes very hard to commit for that kind of 100 to 0 all in. Uh, and Sivir is going to be very adept at pushing in the lane, so Nautilus may have to look for plays elsewhere or simply just wait for the jungle. Nice route there from Phoenix. Just tagging Demonte on the very edge here. Lots of kind of fun stuff happening with creep waves here, but Phoenix right now is getting the lane pushed in and just trying to pepper harass where he can. In fact, both these champions play somewhat similarly, laning pattern-wise. But uh, Phoenix right now looking good in the early stages of the game, but we'll keep track as someone say picks up more and more gold. As I say that, root. another binding straight to the dome. Yeah, well done there by Phoenix. You know, every time you hit one of those roots, you get rewarded with multiple procs of that Q, uh, being able to kind of lock them down into it. Both junglers starting to hover around this mid lane, but it is a panda actually going back to base. We'll see if Lyra wants to make any sort of move. I think both junglers may just be resetting unless Phoenix can kind of be baited into to walking to the side of the map, but that would be you know, a pretty big mistake if he walks too far over. Pops the W though, and now Demonte actually might be able to turn it back around. Gold card ready, forcing the flash. Good route though, Phoenix reads the situation nicely. Yeah, yeah, Phoenix, I mean, still though, like, you know, having, having to actually use that flash, I, I would say is, is a fairly big mistake when your jungler is not there around mid lane. You have no vision on the top side. You have to expect that the jungler is there, right? So. He kind of got a bit greedy trying to chase for what I think was you know, him thinking, all right, I'm going to get a big 1v1 advantage, but he lost track of where is Lyra? Where could Lyra be? And as a result, he has to blow his flash. That could set up for a very easy repeat gank. When Jarvan still has flash, there's flash gold card to set it up. Uh, so Phoenix may be in a little bit of danger for the next couple minutes. Top lane, Huni with a good double stun. So with Lyra behind him, is going to get away from that situation. Yeah, I think Phoenix, though. I agree with you, did get a bit greedy. Tough to get kills with Teleport and Glacial Augment, as it turns <laughs> out. Not a whole lot of combat effectiveness there. Yeah. Phoenix also running low on mana, but can burn the TP whenever he wants and does have a biscuit to eat just in case. But with Demonte already TPing back down, I imagine Phoenix will just want to reset this ASAP. Yeah, Phoenix will have to go back to base here. He may have been wanting to try to, you know, greet it out for a bit of a better buy, but not going to have the luxury of doing so. I will be sent back to base and can utilize that teleport to pick up this wave, but it gives Demonte another reset. Demonte is in fact going for the Triforce, so we'll see what kind of a, a, a take he has on this build. I have seen you know a number of different variations. I've seen the the kind of straight up, just like on hit style, where people have gone things like Rage Blade and Wit's End and, and even Nashers and all kinds of crazy stuff. There is the Bjergsen style of, of build that he played, where it is rapid fire straight out of the Triforce for that additional range on the gold card. Uh, so we will get to find out exactly what Demonte uh, wants to go for here. Certainly will in uh, a few moments. But Fade already done, as you mentioned. So certainly looking for Triforce first. You have to imagine there's the Aftershock Nautilus Q interaction you mentioned. And uh, Orkin just throws out a shield and that trade dissipates pretty quickly. Slira and Panda also doing battle. Red Smite committed. That's going to force a flash as Lyra lined up the flag and drag. Yeah, Panda can win that 1v1, but the bot lane can roam a lot faster from Clutch when you're trying to go for the Scrum. But is Equifox moving up now? Looking for a potential 3v3. We'll see if it does result in a fight. But Cody Sun for now just pushing it out. So they will just give up the ward. Not going to try to fully commit to that. Yep, just get some more kills, get some vision down, and no need to commit too hard there. It's Huni returning back to the top lane with a tier mat. Now all done. Yeah, and Huni's done a great job. I mean, he started the game without flash and you know is doing very well in this laning phase thus far. Having that tier mat makes it much more you know kind of possible to go for those sort of aggressive plays because you can set up for the Q resets a lot more easily. Tiamat procs on your Q as well, so you know it's very easy to then set up those range of minions. Really, just one auto uh, Tiamat proc, you can search Q through pretty much the whole wave. So it does allow you to stack up that passive for the additional damage and also you know, more playmaking to actually dodge out on the Aatrox sweet spots, which he really needs to kind of hit to be able to, to win that sort of a 1v1 against Relia. Back to mid lane though. No. Oh, never mind. Back to top lane. Good chain again from Lolo. I've seen him pull off actually quite some nice trades here mm -hmm. in the matchup, despite the fact that Huni does have that CS lead. Ooh, Venga Z went wide there. <laughs> Huni uh, tried and go for some sort of all-in, but did not get the ulti connected. 
Most of them are a little surprised to actually just check. There's only been, he's only been able to proc his grass twice this whole game. Uh, so certainly not getting the most out of it. You know, when you do go for grasp, but it is mostly for laning. You want to be able to stack oh, this up, oh. and now three-man dive coming Monte in. Again, goal cut happens, but he actually buffered a Q to knock up Demonte. Great. There's the stun in onto Lola, but Lola gonna live back. back. He's going aggressive, gets the grass proc there, dashing back towards his turret as Demonte, lining up the gold cut again. Looks at like the kill is there. It's first blood over to Lyra. Honestly, pretty well played from Lorlo. Not able to survive, though. Not able to actually get out of there as the three-man dive does come down. I don't think he could have played it too much better, but now multiple plates going, and that is the kind of dive where it makes you just want to leave the game as a top laner because you just TP'd back, you got killed under turret, so not only you know do you give up that kill, you lose all of his CS, so he's going to lose multiple waves. He lost two turret plates. You are so far behind now in the 1v1 that it starts to feel really doomed. Yeah, gold lead-wise, it's actually 600-ish. Up for Huni, the eyeball there. Yeah, but 700 plus. You know, that's a pretty big deal. Significant. Like, yeah, and, and here is the dive one more time. You know, pretty well handled. That was actually a great Q buffer on Demonte. This is honestly the only reason that Delolo didn't just straight up die at the very start. He's even able to get a trade of flashes out of Lyra in a 1v3. Another great Q buffer onto Demonte as he takes aggro, which forces his flash out. So he does get multiple flashes uh, before dying in the 1v3. Don't think he could have played it too much better. But here on the bottom side, trying to TP up to support him. Flash binding from Vulcan. He must have known he was in the brush, but he didn't have a ward there. So he must have seen him walk into it, I do believe. Can you see the TP flush? I I'm can't not, remember I'm that not part sure. Maybe you could, he, you might, that's, that's a very good point. He may be able to actually see that. Out Ooh, of flash root pop blossom hook. See you later, Demonte. Hakuo able to claim that with the Aftershock. Yeah, that is a critical binding, though, from, from Vulcan. Had Apollo actually arrived there, maybe they're able to turn that around and get multiple kills. Either way, another kill going their way. And now they're able to take down DeMonte uh, as Phoenix is able to make good on his first ultimate. So you know, both mid laners now kind of grabbing Ooh. a kill for themselves with Vulcan that. Vulcan barely missing the hook with the depth charge after the root is maybe going to be enough. Certainly so as Pando with the reckless swing able to take down the support locks. Yeah, Aftershock not enough to keep you alive through that. They do get his heal as well. He just gets burst down. So now Cody Sun with his support going down knows the possibility of the roam coming in is very dangerous, so he has to back off and give up some of this farm as as well as break. potentially some turret plates. Yeah, kind of, uh, I guess, somewhat of what we expected here as Fox are looking to take over the top lane specifically in this matchup. Bot lane, I suppose, has been good for Apollo and Parklo, at least as far as CS goes, but Siva certainly looking towards that mid and late game, so I think not... No alarm bells there just yet for Clutch. No, I, I think the top lane is really what's most concerning for Echo Fox and the fact that Huni is, is this far ahead. Uh, Lorlo quite far down as far as farm. He's losing the turret plates. He got three man dove and that really did kind of put him out of it. Um, you know, I don't think that you know, it's, it's, it's like he's absolutely doomed. It's not like he can't come back. You know, the team is actually ahead in gold right now. You know, they're, they're up a kill. So certainly you're just kind of relying on, on you playing safe and, and your teammates making plays elsewhere. Uh, Silver Lake game is very strong, but Apollo is ahead in that bottom lane right now, and Zaya has really good scaling and playmaking too. You have lots of great ways to engage, so uh, they do have the possibility of kind of starting out fights, and they're going to group five and just move towards this Rift Herald to try to utilize their power right now. And Fox at least trying to take advantage of the objective series. Leo gets hooked up by Hakuo. That's going to give them the Rift Herald over, but now they've got to get out of there. Demonte threatening to get in, but does not go for it. Vanguard's edge hits Hakuo, but that's actually missed reset there for Huni as a result. Now unstoppable Panda does go down to Huni. Pop Blossom not quite able to connect as the rest of Clutch look to collapse. A good ult there from Apollo as Lolo tries to slow down the rest of Clutch, but Lyra undeterred does get rooted up. Phoenix with a massive three-man root as the team continues to try and run away. Lyra commits the smite. Now maybe a turnaround here as Lyra too far forward gets picked up by Lolo, and at the end of the day, it's only a one-for-one. One. Yeah, the one-for-one, one, but they also grab that Rift Herald, and now seeping straight to bot lane is the Monte who wants to try to shove us in. And get some turret plates here for himself. It looked like Clutch was going to be able to, to get more out of that chase, but Paco turning around, hits the passive root, setting up for a root as well from Apollo, and, and Lorlo comes in with the Q, so they do trade back a kill. And we'll see what they can get done with this Rift Hill. There's two minutes till turret plates go down, so they would love to try to cash in on that. Yeah, also note, uh, Panda did get the cloud back after the dive in top lane, which is the objective I was alluding to earlier, but again, they get the Rift Hill, it's just Getting out that proves to be the problem. Yeah, exactly. As Aquo kind of warding Lyra away to secure this. 
Uh, the TF ultimate is popped, but you see all five are grouped up, and Huni goes in. Ultimate only connecting on Hako, though, as Panda had a great sidestep. You can see that Huni kind of kiting back, not able to actually land this ultimate on anyone from Phoenix, and then it's full on retreat here from Echo Fox, just running straight away. Panda had gone down so low in health was Phoenix, but he lands a three-man root, and then Lyra stepping forward. Aqua turns around, the feathers are set up, passive root into that pullback, into the Q from Lorlo, and they are able to knock down Lyra. Nice dunk there for Lorlo at the end to get himself a kill, as Harold is spawned here in mid lane. We're gonna get those plates and maybe even dive the turret here. Twisted Fate, not great in a 1v4 tower dive. No, Vulcan is coming, but he's in trouble. That charge happens, the Monte gonna be forced to flash away, has the gold card ready so that will deter the dive between the two turrets, but tower's still low. They're gonna look to get at least this fourth plate here. Shelly able to grab it, gold goes over, and there is a Mountain Drake up as well, so Fox gonna head down there. Yeah, and they are gonna be able to get the flash off the Monte, so that is very nice, but Huni, looking like he is, is pushing for this first turret. It should be his. You can see that Lorlo's just backing off. He knows he can't actually contest Huni right now. And if you try to defend that turret, Huni can finish off the turret, then potentially go for you. Panda going to be in retreat here on the bottom side, but they're going to be pushing up. And Echo Fox picking up quite a few turret plays in these last couple minutes, but they're still pretty far down in gold, largely because, you know, TF passive plus the Klepto plus the advantage for Huni on the top side. Yeah, I mean, Huni's lead is starting to get uh, very scary. He's approaching 2,000 gold ahead in his 1v1. He got the first turret bonus gold and all the plates out of the turret in top side, and Fox couldn't commit to either finishing mid lane or taking the Mountain Drake. So the map's actually reset a little here, but Huni just reaped the benefits while his team kind of dealt with whatever was happening in mid lane. Fox are now back down here trying to get vision and take a stab at the objective, but Huni wants to, he can TP down and try and force something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if he does. I mean, he hasn't actually gone back to base yet, so he's, he's not that strong, but... Oh, big binding! Really nice there, the ult follows as well. Hakoi now off to the wall. Huni looks for the ult, he does not connect, but a dunk happens. Lyra able to take down Phoenix, full of pop blossom can in fact pop. Fox is still trying to fight it out, but Tomate in the backside able to take down the Olaf. And that's just Lolo running away at clutch, full on attacking between these two turrets. Tomonte again with the gold card, but cannot find a stun he likes. Yeah, great collapse there from Clutch. They get two for zero on the kills. They could potentially get this mid lane turret here as well as they have that cannon minion pushing this up and they can even retreat back to the Mountain Dragon if they do want. So Clutch getting a lot off of this aggressive play and really opening up the gold lead here. Huni gonna be closing in on that Triforce completion and he is gonna be running the side lanes between him and Demonte closing out on level 11, already 20% CDR from that Triforce, he will likely be going towards that rapid fire now with the zeal completion. So Clutch is gonna have the run of the map in the side lanes and it becomes very difficult to be able to kind of match this. Echo Fox wants to group up and force around these objectives, but if you can't win the 5v5 because of great plays like this from Bulk and Binding coming through, alt across multiple numbers, Demonte coming in from behind, Phoenix just gets dunked and then Huni going in, trying to chase down Apollo, pushing him out of the fight as well. Yeah, Demonte making the right choice there with his ultimate, just going backline and trying to continue to the flank. And, you know, Clutch, they try something there, but they have enough pressure in mid that that's all that really matters. They also did get the Mountain Drake as well. Good hook there from Hakuo in onto Lyra, but Prismatic Barry and a quick light finding gets him out of there. Yeah, Echo Fox really trying to force it. They don't want this game uh, to be kind of in a slow-paced game because Clutch can peel them apart with Aurelia and the TF in the side lane. So they want to keep grouping. They want to utilize the power of this warrior on the Olaf. But you know, even if you're just comparing items between the junglers, you can see you know right now Lyra is a lot stronger. There's quite a bit of gold still on uh, you know, on Panda, so he he can actually buy up and try to close the itemization gap a little bit. But you know, Jarvan is ahead of you. You're your top laner is very far behind. Uh, it's, it's kind of getting tough here for Echo Fox. They, they need to find picks and they need to kind of continue to do that. And again, I think with something like the GOP now done for Phoenix, there are avenues mm -hmm. for Fox to try and look for fights, especially around objectives, but they'll have to wait three and a half minutes for the next mountain. Baron isn't up for a number of minutes and probably isn't takeable right at 20 anyway. Yeah, and I mean, Nautilus, Nautilus is always going to be able to find the engage. It's just can you win the fight afterwards, right? You know, are you going to be able to kind of win the follow-up and thus far they haven't been able to actually you know get a coordinated engage where they kill someone off immediately and then kind of run over the fight it's been more clutch disengaging playing it slow you know members coming in from multiple sides utilizing tf and and they're kind of able to peel them apart as they did around that mountain dragon and certainly credit to vulcan as well for starting off that fight well so we'll see if aqua fox can battle back here as 
again, quietly, we have another Sivir game where you know Cody Sun is, is scaling up. He has not been a massive part of the game, but you know he is, he's getting his items. The Essence River is complete. He's working towards his Zeal item, and then you know when he hits it, when he hits that IE, he will be a terror in these team fights. You can kind of see why all this attention is down in the bottom half of the map, though, because. Clutch really wants to take Fox's last outer turret, and Echo Fox really don't want to give that turret away, because as soon as all that space opens up, playing against Twisted Fate becomes an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it really does become very, very difficult. There's so many less defensible places on the map, and that's also a big reason why we see, you know, this, this bot side jungle, all this vision, you know, all these members kind of in this area. Uh, they've set up this, this line of, of defensive wards kind of along here. They're trying to stop Clutch from having having the confidence to move forward, and it's it's Clutch that kind of has set up their vision on the opposite side of the map. But as you can see, you know, toggled here by the observers, Echo Fox only have that defensive line of vision. They can't see anywhere on the top side. They cannot see anywhere across the river, uh, and that kind of does speak to uh, the tempo of this game. And this is honestly an, an incredible line of vision all the way across here uh, for Clutch. You know, really like kind of all along here, you can see throughout there's so many wards. And it really does make it difficult for them to kind of make those proactive plays if they don't have vision. And again, when you're playing some sort of side lane oriented strategy, which certainly this big Aurelia and this Twisted Fate is, always good to have that vision down. And with RFC completed for the Monte, he's at a happy two item spot and we'll look to just keep shoving side lanes as long as possible. Yeah, and one of the cool things about Rapid Fire Cannon is it allows you to get gold cards on carries without exposing yourself as much, right? You know, traditionally people talk about the flash gold card as Huni's actually standing on a ward here, so Echo Fox may want to go for this. Ooh, straight in onto Apollo. Oh, the, the, the Feather Storm, but the Depth Charge onto Huni, they'll get out of there as the TPs come down into the bottom side of the map. Great route, though, from Apollo. Going to take down Demonte in an instant. Good stun, yeah. though, on Lolo, so I'm not sure the chase is there, but still a good pick. Actually going to force the flash there from... Hakua, who is on point with that hook. Uh, no zone used to save you there. That's not a messiah. He's going to go down immediately, unfortunately, for him, as you know, they couldn't actually can compete in that fight. It was, it was a nice start from Huni. He was able to dodge out with the Nautilus hook, dodge out from the feathers using his ult for a reset to the side. That was pretty clean, but once the, the rest of the squad kind of arrives and they have this Olaf up on top of you, Demonte is TPing in, and that was an indefensible TP, so I think it was the right call from Flush to just sacrifice the TF and, and back off. We'll break up now in uh, 15 seconds or so. So we'll watch this one again. Yeah, so Huni caught out on the ward here. Honestly, really nice job to avoid the initial plays, dodging out the hook, then ult to the side of Hakuo. Q's over there to dodge out from Apollo's ult, but in come the TPs. No way you're saving Demonte there. You gotta be so careful about those sorts of teleports as a TF. You're very, very squishy. Lyra also got very low as we pop back into the game. It was actually forced to smite the Drake with his first charge. But Demonte just gates into the mid lane, getting a bit of vision first with the ulti. Yeah, I think I think Clutch actually want the dragon, but this is this is tough with with Lyra sitting that low. You know, he, he can kind of get one rounded by some of these champions. I mean, I would want the Drake if I was playing this kind of comp. We're gonna split push around the map, but Fox gonna make them fight for it here. Hako looking for a hook, finds a minion. Can always threaten again with the ulti, which is back up. But again, Clutch is looking to push this back out. They might try and find a fight. A big Vanguard's edge there, but Lyra already so low. We're going to get finished off here. Phoenix actually going to pop the bomb off and shut down Huni. And that's going to be Lyra dead as well. Fox now on the chase, looking for Vulcan. Does burn the flash, gets out of there and light binds just to make sure. But that's two free ones there for Fox. Yeah, I actually can't believe that Clutch engaged. I mean, you want to be playing side lanes with this sort of a composition. They went forward with Lyra having no health. Pony is kind of diving 1v9 into the back line, and, and Lyra basically dies before he's able to get anything done whatsoever. That, that is not really, I think, the way you want to play out this sort of composition. You want to have the Sivir and the Lux and the, the J4 just stalling in the mid lane. You don't need to risk it all for a Mountain Dragon, right? You know, maybe if it's a Baron, I, I understand trying to take that fight, but... Just send your guys to a side lane. They're so strong right now. Huni will certainly win the 1v1 against the Aatrox. You'd push them up, you make the man the side lane, then you collapse with the TF ult. That's, that's how the comp works. Yeah, it feels like Clutch uh, trying to force too many 5v5s like this one. Yeah, I mean, the waves are even in their favor in the side lane. They're, you know, they don't need to push for anything. It's a great initial ult from Huni, sure, but look at Lyra. He's already out of it immediately. Huni diving forward is not going to have his dive buddy there. He almost admittedly does take down Phoenix, so it was well played by him. But, you know, without the additional 
damage coming through from Lyra. They don't have that kind of oomph to try to knock someone down. And Cody Sun Vulcan and Demonte are not going to be able to run through the front line to actually get to the back line. They're not going to be able to just ignore this Olaf and walk into him. And these are the, you know, the Warriors of the Clutch where the top players, when playing well and playing aggressively, look very good. But we've heard that Cody's kind of the guy that says no on this team. <laughs> maybe going to have to speak a little bit louder. Yeah, I mean, there's, I think, a couple times this game where, where maybe a no would have helped. Uh, but they do commit to it. They do get punished a little bit, but they are still in a pretty good position. Uh, 1,000 gold is the lead right now. They were further ahead, but it is Echo Fox, you know, kind of clawing their way back into this game, trying to set up potentially around this Baron. Uh, the battle for vision will be pretty important, and you can see that sneaky ward over by the pit. That is why is it so important to have a, a pink kind of both inside and outside the pit, because one pink cannot actually cover both the back wall of the Baron. If you see here, you can't cover this area and this area with the same pink. So you need to kind of have one here, one here outside the pit, um, or, you know, cover that fully with sweepers, uh, because this sort of thing can, can lead you into a lot of problems. And we even saw this last week in the LCS, you know, where Smithy was able to actually steal a Baron off of Optic because of a, a misplaced pink. So now they will clear it out, but you need to make sure you have full control of the vision. Otherwise, these sort of baiting plays don't actually get anything done. But certainly, now with Fox clearing that out, forcing onto a Baron is a good way to make the split push team come to you. Cooney, though, finally getting his job done there in the bottom half of the map will take the third turret and actually the turret lead for Clutch overall. But this is kind of where your comp starts to play. I think they would have liked to have these towers knocked down earlier, but you can still now enact the game plan that you have drafted. Yeah, you certainly can. But because Echo Fox are, are maybe closer than they were a, a while ago, uh, Echo Fox still have the ability to start an objective and try to force you to come to them. And now they're looking for an engage. Oh, what a hook from Hakuo. Good slow there to start it off by the Olaf. And Apollo is collecting kills here. Is Lyra now going to be the next one to be locked up? Cataclysm goes. Better Storm saves Apollo. And that's a double kill there for the Zaya. Yeah, really well done from Echo Fox. And Clutch had the TF ult. They could have just popped it to actually try to check around the Baron. Instead, they think that they're safe to go for this sort of face check. And they get punished very heavily. Losing two members. Now the TF ult goes down, but it is 3v5, and Echo Fox are on the Baron here with this Mountain Dragon. They're going for it. They are low, though. It oh, is what a hook from Hakuo. Pop off him instantly. That's from Phoenix. Into the Zonius finds a start on the end of it all. But Cody's not actually into the fight, able to take down He's Phoenix. He's shredding them. Ricochet is massive. Demonte picks up the kill on the other end. And in a 3v5, it's Clutch that find the kills. Four for zero in a 3v5. They're chasing on Dahuni. Ignoring Cody Sun on the Sivir, and Cody Sun just shreds them. Echo Fox just threw away the Baron Clutch. Are going to be in such a strong position now, and Echo Fox have got to be kicking themselves. Here comes Lyra, not even needed to secure the objective. It's Cody that grabs the last hit as Clutch. Clutch out that fight. Yeah. Here it is one more time. So, you know, they, they have the TF Ultimate available, they don't elect to drop it. Hard engage comes through. They get the first kill onto the support. Then a great ultimate over onto Lyra. Chases him down. He tries to turn for a kill, but not quite enough to finish off anyone on Echo Fox. Then they go to the Baron. This is a good move from them. You know, they have the jungler down. They're fairly low on health on a couple members, but they can make this sort of a play happen. They decide to go for the turn. They look here for Huni, but the hook right around the corner, buffering out onto him. But they're ignoring, ignoring Cody Sun. Watch Cody Sun here. He's sitting on the side. Ricocheting through the whole team as you chase through the corridor onto Huni. What is that? What is that targeting? That's a Zimmer. You can't ignore him. He's so strong now. I mean, like maybe just tunneling on Huni because yeah. he was the one that was winning in the early game. Certainly, I think looking they back, not the target they should have prioritized. And Clutch will take it. They're up so much gold now, 5k ahead. With the Baron power play numbers just ticking up and up. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the, the straw that broke the camel's back here as. Clutch is, is looking in full control at this point. Uh, they do have such a strong kind of split push style of composition as well. Three items done on Huni now. He has a GA. The IE going to be coming through not only soon for just 
Demo it's on Demonte almost, but it's you know gonna be on the Sivir here as well. So both these guys are gonna be ridiculously strong. They're TPing in for the flank. This could be the final fight. Finding good onto Harkalo, but Fox gonna try and turn it back around. Phoenix looking for the ult. He does find Demonte at least, but Huni diving into the back lines as well. They're gonna tie up Vulcan for as long as he can. Lyra with the Cataclysm dives in, but the Feather Storm pulls back into so much damage to Huni. This cannot be stopped. He's got the GA. He's diving in onto the members of Echo Fox. He started carrying the game, and it looks like he's gonna try and end it. Yeah, that should do it. It. They have the minions, they have the Baron Buffets, just Panda alive. Barring some sort of heroics, it's a 4v1. They look to close it out. Good luck, Olaf, as Clutch is going to take down Nexus turret number one and two. And Fox, one mistake, and Clutch punished them to the absolute maximum. Taking down the Nexus and taking down.